and a big splosh of a reverb. Ethereal, a little bit too long, maybe. kind of um, bass maybe so with the bass we can go for maybe zebra again
need to make that base fatter. With more overdrive, more of everything. Something like that. Maybe a little bit too thick base there, but um, I will change that later. Then just uh, a duplication of that first uh, base part. Just like that and command D as always. Let's see. Just a little bit of sub subtle grit in there. And now we're going into trap land. A little bit of trapping. But we're not going to have it in a sampler. We are going to have it in audio. Just for the sake of it, and the kick. Yeah, we can work with with that kick. Just make it shorter. Cerberus, not too thick, reminds me of the Binding of Isaac music. Never heard of, but um, yeah, we we can uh, at least uh, work with uh, with the grittiness here of that uh, bass, because uh, as you can see and hear, there's uh, a lot of options for making a subtle uh, overdrive and saturation here in uh, the Zebra, the Zebra plugin. But we were building some, some percussion, some drums. My bad.
should have some... Yeah, some funk bass. Yeah, that's a sweet uh, organ. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but we need some, we need some hi-hats, or some wood blocks maybe. Gong. What you track and the gong. Then we need to select this part and make some kind of duplication. Cowbell. More cowbell for the win. No, but we need a hi-hat. So why not find some hi-hats? Leading into the kicks, or at least uh, some of the kicks. And we need to reverse and rewind like this. <laughs> And maybe do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and... And having these uh, leading into the kicks, so we have a little bit of swoop, a little swooping sound before the kick hits. I think it's neat.
bit of weird uh, filtering going on on this uh, wood block to give it a little bit of movement. Adding a little bit of notch here. It's a very weird sound, but maybe we can just um, mute this. Make it legato. Improvisations. But let's add a layered piano on top of that. The gentleman, my favorite piano as of now. It's um, very easy to configure this piano. Let's 
system like that and let's add the OTT to get this um, hammered really lush piano and then we can add EQ to get rid of a little bit of annoying frequencies Yeah, this is the result after one hour. I'm just uh, playing around here. It's like a little uh, improvisational jam. So then when you have all this uh, layered up, you can just uh, arrange it into a full track if you want. So I usually do this, I build up the whole drop if you will, and then I just uh, remove parts and add parts. And arrange the track from that full arrangement. this and then remove the shaper on this one and remove automations bit of impact here in the introduction with plenty of uh, reverb
need to have more wash, washed out sound on this one. So shimmer. record a little part like that and have it uh, reversed. Uh, always nice and then we just uh, bounce that down to an audio track we can have it post fader and just reverse this little clip so how's your uh, Easter Marius eaten any Easter food Typical Easter foods. this moving around a little bit in a stereo field like this. Yeah, that's great. Three days to make music. It's the best. instead. Move them a little bit closer.
something like that. That's a big mess of reverbs. So I probably need to get rid of a little bit of reverbs on this uh, second lead piano sound. Yeah, I think the bass uh, turned out uh, quite well for this one. Even if it's just, uh, I just uh, worked from the standard uh, uh, initialized uh, or the first preset that uh, loads up with Zebra, the default preset. But uh, I added some saturation and the XMF filter. Let's see here. <laughs> so that's uh, just the basic setup. You just uh, drag down the envelope too and uh, probably the cutoff too and add a little bit of drive to that uh, standard VCF filter. And then you have this shaper which adds uh, a second layer of saturation and there's uh, a few types here that you can try out. This uh, shape one is more subtle if that's if you want a more subtle saturation. But uh, I think, yeah, the wedge one, I usually use either the shape or the wedge one because uh, the T-drive can get a little bit messy. The wedge one fattens up the sound. And then we have the XMF filter just to get rid of the absolute highs on this saturated bass. We could actually leave that in, but... Because if we look at this on a spectrum analyzer... Where is that one? We can take the pro Q. If we look at the spectrum analyzer while fiddling with the sound. So that XMF uh, filter is uh, fattening up the sound a little bit extra there with this uh, overdrive and the clickiness of the filter. And I set this XMF filter to yeah, the XMF mode. The analog uh, model is a little bit uh, softer. This is, this is a rocking filter. But if we, if we remove this, it's just a basic pad sound. And yeah, it's the basic oscillators, sawtooths. 
but we could make one of them into sign if we want. But it's a saturated sign. could also make this uh, monophonic, I think. With a little bit of glide. Since it's a bass. But we need to get rid of, yeah, let's activate the oscillator one again. And make oscillator two into sawtooth. We probably need to add some uh, some low cut here because uh, it's uh, introducing a lot of very low frequencies. Something like that. Yes, I mean, I'm just uh, fiddling here with a little track start, track starter. And initially I was only going to uh, test and try out this new OBS uh, settings with the Streamlabs, but uh, I could as well do a little bit of composing while I'm at it. And now we can mix these sounds a little bit, maybe, because uh, I think uh, some of them take up a little bit too much space in this mix. I'm not uh, using any headphones today, so uh, it's a bit hard to actually hear, hear how it sounds, because I have to have uh, quite low volume here, so it's not uh, being pick, picked up in the mic for the stream. And this needs a little bit of... A little bit of reverb. So this needs to be adjusted a little bit, a tad. Maybe get rid of the highs. Have it very focused in the middle, this, uh, this ambient piano stuff happening.
maybe have this uh, going with some other kind of melody on top of that let's see that was the end of the sample let's uh, drag it back a little bit and then we can do a little bit of cross fading Something. Maybe have another bass line here for the introduction. bars or something tool gating <laughs> yeah you know uh, for Xcode I have developed a few apps you can check out uh, Nisses music in uh, uh, in the app store for iPad and I have uh, some other uh, kids games uh, Nisse playful and uh, playful math is uh, another um, of uh, some of my apps and I also developed apps for clients too so that's why I have Xcode but it's it's been a while now since I fiddled with uh, Xcode because um, I changed to develop in Unity but uh, yeah I spent a few years in Xcode and uh, two versions of Blender this is uh, Blender 2.7 and this is Blender 2.8. So that's uh, why I have two icons here on the desktop. Maybe we can just uh, flip it up for a second here. 
Do you use Blender, Marius? You know, I did this uh, render for... Uh... Okay, I can't load it. But we can load up some projects here, let's see. Sound packs, Rhythmica. You know, I make the box renders for, for my products. And uh, I also created a lot of uh, animated films with, uh, with Blender in combination with uh, a code review. <laughs> Why would, would you need to make a code review? Here we have the Rhythmica package. So I create this in, in Blender and make the product renders like so. And we have the, let's see here, the Chaos Star. I wonder if this, this one is going to load. Nope. I think this was Blender 2.7. That's why it doesn't load in 2.8. Yeah. So this is uh, another product render with uh, Blender 2.7. And I also think I have another scene here for yeah, for this uh, weird chaos star thing. Well, I mean, uh, I started coding when I was uh, 12 and uh, music, I've been uh, producing music since I was uh, 15. I released my first album at age uh, 17 with Nagelfar, Vitra. Let's see if we can quit this. Yeah, so definitely uh, check out the uh, Nissis Music app in uh, in iOS for the iPad if you have if you have an iPad, because uh, I also created a sequencer, a step sequencer for uh, for the family in that app. So that's uh, that's quite cool. Where was I? vocal sample just to finish this off for today so a vocal sample nah. nope we need to find it elsewhere so loops vocal shops maybe hey Hey always works, at least when you put millions, millions of seconds of reverb. And 
the regarding the coding before I did uh, iPhone apps and iPad apps I was uh, developing a lot of flash and uh, before that C++ and yeah I mean so I've been coding PHP for websites and the backends uh, uh, backend systems reseller systems a lot of different systems but uh, music is much more fun of course and we need to have one 12 semitones below For those uh, vocal shops, we need to make them a bit more focused. Get rid of that rumbling low end and make them very focused here in the mid range. Like that. So they are not poking out, poking the eyes of the listener. <laughs> That's a very weird weird sound there. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's uh, happened a lot. Uh, there's uh, happened a lot in the in the iOS uh, and Android development world uh, the last few few years here, because uh, in the past we had to allocate memory and uh, have to do all this garbage collection. But now it's just uh, <laughs> it's just a playground, especially if you use uh, Unity. Yeah, and in the past I was also coding Turbo Assembler and. Uh, yeah, assembler, um, Turbo Pascal, Pascal, is that how you say it? Turbo Pascal, when I was going to, going in school. Yeah, so you've been doing some C++ and Objective-C too, cool. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wrap up this little stream for today. It was just a, a basic uh, test. And yeah, if you have any suggestions on uh, the placements of the different uh, screens for the, for the stream labs, for the comments, etc., you can shoot them in the Discord. So I can adjust this. Uh, and hopefully it will work work out good for the for the Bitwig 3 release stream. At least I got some t-shirts and a few giveaways from Bitwig, so now I can hand them out uh, in the stream. I was hoping for a few more of the orange ones and the red ones, but uh, apparently they didn't have that much in stock for the red and orange colors. We have this one, which is a really nice color. I really like this one. But it's uh, XL, so it's too big for me. Uh, this and uh, uh, some of them look like this and I will give them out as giveaways I will randomize uh, the names in the stream for that uh, for that live stream and we will see who who gets them it will be random randomly picked people 
Okay, Marius and the Beep and Kenton and the few lucky ones for this little private stream. I hope you will have a really nice evening and yeah, let's see you on Discord. Thanks for joining in today and helping out getting this uh, set up. See you. Bye bye.